Clans World Championship, the first golden ticket that will be handed on Titans. We have Amwal and Synthe, Uriam, Kingsman, and Tryhard. That is the bulk of the team that played when they were MS Esports when they came in third place in the last year's at World Championship. Look at them all there now on the screen, prepped and ready to go. The exact same teams returning over and over with a completely open format. But here we go. We're into the first war and we're kicking it off with Synthe. He's going after the Skelly Bat Donut, going after the CC, the Monolith, and the Multi Inferno. Bat spells onto the Monolith, Bat spells onto the Multi Inferno, and the Skeleton spells will snipe off that defensive CC. And if you didn't know, the CC cannot be pulled by bat spells or skeleton spells, so if they destroy it, the CC troops can no longer deploy. And here we go with the heroes coming in from the right side of the base, Woody. That is a major defensive building eliminated in an early strike. A very high skill attack that you really have to be very careful about positioning and timing for. Since he has executed it without a flaw, and he's going to be moving in from the right side now with these two heroes trying to get a big chunk of this base taken down. Got to keep an eye on that single target Inferno in the bottom right compartment and make sure that that Archer Queen stays safe from it, though. He has got to have some great tech ready to drop on her. Invisibility spells will be the first way to keep her safe and moving through this base along with that King and the Royal Champion now deployed and raged up along the top side, knocking down that scatter shot and giving a good entry point now for the main base of this attack. Of course, it's going to be La Loon, one of the preferred strats among these top squads at the uh, higher echelons of player. Absolutely, and on top of that, the Royal Champion will slip past the King there and go all the way to the Eagle Artillery. That has a couple of important benefits there. Oh. Not only, oh, oh, she missed it. She does not quite get it down. He sends the blimp through, protected by the ward ability, and he's able to go in and snipe off the town hall. He charges the most threatening area of the base remaining, going after that area with the rage tower with the early ward ability, and the blimp sails through, locks down the town hall, but he's going to continue to take Eagle Artillery strikes until he gets there, Woody. Found an early tornado trap and lost quite a few balloons in that bottom left section. But the early setup over there on the right side has left little of the base to worry about. It's knocked down so many crucial defenses. And yet, once again, an air defense staying up on the top side is bad news for Cynthia. He's been hoping to take these targets down so that the loons that are here for cleanup won't have too much to deal with. He is being able to finally wrap around to the top side now, but only 45 seconds left for cleanup. And this troop army, it's just looking really thin. I think he's got it though, Eric. Oh, he absolutely does have another 30 seconds. I think he can sit back and relax. He's got more cleanup deployed on the right <laughs> side. Plenty of time. These balloons, as soon as they take out the storages, are going to turn right, or as soon as they take out the defense, I mean, are going to turn right back over to the storages. And you can see he's got plenty of time to get it done. So Imperium Titans, one of my favorite players in all of Clash of Clans Esports, Synthe locks in our opening attack of the war. But now we got to see if Bad Singer is able to get the response here because we know that these teams are... Means that Vane is going to have his feet to the fire trying to do the very same against this next base. Bad Singer is moving in against Irium's setup. And guess what? They're going to be coming in with a different style of attack. Electro Dragons predominate this raid. How is he going to open up, Eric? Looks like he's getting ready to maybe push Electro Dragons through the town hall. Looking at where we have defensive heroes, we have them... Uh, by the town hall and the, the top and bottom scatter shot there. So if he can push his dragons through and take out the town hall and the clump of defense is right behind it, he should be in a pretty decent spot here. So not a bad base for Electro Dragons. He's got sweepers pointing away from his entry. So if he can just clear the way, get the defensive heroes under control and set up his world champion sweep at the backside, he's going to put himself in a pretty decent spot. I'm a little bit worried about that rage turn on the far back side, but the Electro Dragons surge their way in, will lock on and chain through the town hall and maybe get a couple of sparks oh. beyond it. No, not really getting any good chains right there. Looks like the targets are going down a little too fast there to get some significant chains. He also got a little bit of a distraction here. Gold storage pulls five of... Or, or, Looks like five dragons are on the top side where only two went into the core. That could be good news if he keeps his troops relatively clustered up there, but does he get enough damage into the interior there with those E-drags to justify this split? Once again, the Eagle Artillery does not go down to this early strike, and Bonnet's going to have a little bit of trouble there. Quick drops a baby dragon at the 2 o'clock position to fly on in, but that's going to be another salvo of 
eagle shots raining down on those four electro dragons that combined with the air defense firing off these very few forces left on the top side there supporting that flame flinger which has just been doing excellent work for the entirety of the first stage of this attack <laughs> Juan is looking very him. happy though cheering and waving his hands he knows that the job is done even though there is still quite a bit of base left he has got the cleanup necessary to get that three star hasn't even popped off that royal champion shot yet eric Oh yeah, he's absolutely crushed it there. Nicely done, wiping out the core of the base. Or got all of his key targets out of the core, and that Royal Champion was a, a pocket strategy that these top players have held on to. Whereas Lava Hound has always been at the forefront, even for uh, many, many years now, uh, as, as one of the big favorites. And it looks like uh, Et is going to be bringing that back with uh, Al Mullen coming in next. Yeah, and the, the Queen Charge into Lala, one of the most versatile attacks in the game here, definitely been a powerhouse strategy for Town Hall 15. And I want to remind people that at Town Hall 15, you have the same level balloons as you do at Town Hall 14. So these guys just having a mastery over these balloons is impressive to see. A lot of players are not able to do this, but the ones that can definitely distinguish themselves at the top. But like uh, what he was saying, these players are very versatile in a lot of different attack strategies, so they can quickly identify whatever the weakness of the base there might be and be ready to execute it with proficiency. So here we go. We got the queen making her way to that open corner there, engage the defensive queen. She was under a lot of damage there, even with the rage, so he goes ahead and frees up the defensive queen. On top of that, he had ground skellies. Ooh, this is going to be close. Goes to ability. Does not die through the ability. It looked like he manually popped it there to make sure the queen did not get threatened as that next bow continues to chip away at her. Man, Eric, I remember a time when you always had to manually pop that ability. Now it's just going to fire right. off immediately if that queen's about to die. But still having that skill check there to be able to fire it at just the right moment, getting the lock and firing the damage off and keeping her safe when he needs her up the most. Al Molin uh, is certainly focusing a lot on that early hero dive, but he's going to have to switch his focus now because it's the La Loon over on this right side of the base, raging him up right on top of that town hall. Haven't gotten it activated yet, so the balloons are not going to be able to target on. They're also going to get stuck into a tornado trap. Mm. Lots of damage about to be dished out to them as we already uh, cut another wave of attack coming in from the top right side. The Stone Slammer dropping bombs, but didn't get the town hall yet, Eric. Oh, I don't know. He ha I think what? he has to put the Road Champion up. But wait, the Road Champion's already deployed at the top of the base here, Woody. No He's in trouble. This way. might be a one-star risk. His queen is down. The healers are trying to transfer over to save the Road Champion, but they are too late to arrive. And that's a big mistake here. The Town Hall was not activated. He was trying to get the percentage up there. It activated right as they were passing by it by... That point, he had already taken too many losses. A big mistake here. A lot of base left on the board here but that town hall stays standing and he's going to end up with a one star there's nothing that he can do about it and that is a big blow to imperium titans here and a, a big boon for bad zinger they can definitely capitalize on that if they triple on this next attack here they would go up by two stars so imperium titans is going to be praying for a defense yeah all right well here we go all right, uh, yeah. Bad Zinger going to be coming in for the next one. <laughs> we got I'll, Kadeel. I'll point out, though, that the Queen Charge. versus Bad Zinger matchup was the only one that started off with a three-star versus three-star. Both stellar teams and really strong squads. The fact that uh, we just saw a one-star from Bad Zinger with an excellent Tornado Trap placement by uh, Dian is really going to give a big upper hand to Bad Zinger now. Uh, well, yeah, I, I think you're right. The scores are swapped there. Anyways, all right. Kadeel is going to be attacking next with another La Loon hit coming in. All right, the Queen's going to be coming in from the bottom of the base here, but he did go ahead and rage up as he dropped in that blimp, able to wipe out uh, part of a Tessa farm there as he dove in towards the defensive Queen. Doesn't actually get the Queen down, but he took everything around her, including the scatter shot as the most important target there. But getting the CC pull, dropping in that blimp to claim at least one major target there, and getting the funnel set for the Queen are all very, very valuable things you can do with that blimp. Those are usually the things that, if we can get that kind of value out of a blimp, it is 100% worth using it. So he will get the CC dealt with, no issues with the Queen at the bottom of the base here, and it looks like she's getting ready to make a beeline charge towards that Town Hall, but there's a lot of threats here up ahead, Woody. He's got the He's got the King, he's got the Single Inferno, multiple ground expos, and right behind that stands that Monolith. Yeah, big, heavy defense. That's what we saw taking down so many of those balloons in that previous attack. 
preventing them from getting that first star. A very terrifying defense to go up against. Uh, firing away with huge, massive damage. Especially against maybe heroes that get uh, a little bit too close wandering in there. Arch Queen will take down that first Inferno and gives a nice opening here. She actually is going to get pulled in now by that Tesla and get the lock onto the Town Hall. It is going to go down, no doubts whatsoever here for Kadeel. Andy on top of that was able to pull a bunch of the traps there. The Tornado Trap goes off early. That's not going to cause any problems. Pulled black and red air bombs, keeping the healers nice and safe through that area. Probably going to need some more Coca Loons as he passes over the top of the Town Hall. So as soon as the Queen is in tanky position, we'd definitely like to see that because I'm always afraid of more traps hiding behind that Town Hall. But at the same time, he's got a lot to manage here. He's got the King of the World Champion moving in on the left side. He's got the Lalo surging in at the top. He's does he have the Headhunters in after the Defensive Queen? Looks like he does. So they move under the Ward ability, able to go in there, and they didn't get her down, and the Royal Champion is standing as well. He might be in trouble with two Defensive Heroes standing, and no more Headhunters left on standby here, Woody. Grabs the Freeze on the enemy Queen and pops her down, though, winning that duel. He did float a couple of balloons in on that bottom section to take care of one of the Wizard Towers, trying to find any Seeking Air Mines that he possibly can. Those are absolutely deadly for the healers, and once the healers go down, that Archer Queen is not going to be long for this world. She has got a big amount of base left, and with only 10 seconds left, the cleanup is just not going to be coming in quick enough here, Eric. We are going to see our mm -hmm. first two-star in this war from Kadil now, coming in at an 89%. Badzinger will hold on to the lead. Yes, they do. They're going to have a slight percentage advantage. Or is that even a percentage advantage? I think that might be the, the same or very close percentage. But... Well, the sun is shining bright there on uh, ET Exports this fine morning. Tryhard is going to be moving back in now for his squad to try to get on top again. Down a single star against Badzinger with that most recent defense. They have got their work cut out for them to overcome that disadvantage of a one-star strike early in the war. Flame Flingers can be firing off on that right corner there. Very long and slow burning attack siege weapon. He's going to try to get down that air defense in the right side corner and use the Archer Queen on the bottom corner to get another one down, opening up an easy pathway for a single lot loon strike. Barbarian King gets pretty deep as well over on the bottom right side of the base. They're pulling out the CC and getting an engaged with an enemy queen and a scatter shot. How much damage can he get off though there? Phoenix is going to pull him back up and get another few shots in, Eric. Yeah, not enough to get the defensive world champion down or the scatter shot. He was intercepted by a whole bunch of ground skellies, giant bombs in that compartment, killing off all the barbarians that he spawned from his ability there. But it, he got enough that he may be able to push the world champion through that area later on. I am a little bit worried about that defensive world champion standing there in the way. Definitely would have liked to get her out of the way, but at least he got the CC pull. And getting the CC pull early in attack like this is quite important. Because now the Queen, because of the CC sitting right behind the Monolith, he won't have to fight the CC while he's taking Monolith Fire, which is very, very important. But the Eagle Artillery uh. is activated now, taking strikes at the Queen. He's got a raged up Expo pinging away at him. He's about to pick up the Town Hall damage. He has to have a freeze on standby. He's going to overwhelm the Queen. He instead goes to a building that will do the job. But he's got the Royal Champion to point on the left side here. And I guess the Lala would probably need to come in on the left side. I thought the Royal Champion would come in from the right, but I guess if she deploys on the left, she pushes the queen oh. to go in, but the queen goes down. It's a safe healer transfer though, Woody. He might be able to still pull this under control. And yeah, the monolith has just obliterated that queen. It's so much damage, especially against high hit point targets, and it is now firing away against that royal champion. She goes invisible, pops the ability, tosses the shield, throws that spear, and it is finished off. Tryhard is on the way to a three star hit. Yeah, I just got to get that defensive Royal Champion down, but his Royal Champion on her final strike there claims her, and that clears the path for the Blues to make their way into the final scatter shot. He's overwhelming. He's got plenty of time left here. Not even the defensive King stopping his cleanup top there is going to stop this from going through. So that's the triple that they needed. That is critically, critically important triple right after they picked up the defense. And if they can pick up almost any defense right now, looks like they are currently two buildings behind so i guess a 98 would tie up the score right now from bad zinger but we'll have to see what happens here across the board here a lot of close wars a couple teams starting to pull ahead but now let's dive into bad zinger sending in nd with a zap lalo for our next attacker woody yeah it's a 
pretty strong percentage advantage there for IT piece coming in at 5% out of only two attacks. It's going to be very hard to surmount that. We really need to see big stars on the other side. Let's see if Bad Singer are able to keep that lead ahead with that one star defense that they had earlier on. That is just such a boon for any squad in this 5v5 setup. Uh, when you knock out essentially two stars from any one opponent, uh, you really are expected to get the win at that point if you can just hang on to that lead. So let's see if the Laloons now from ND are going to give him that shot that he's looking for. Badzinger have leaned on ND for a very long time. Super skilled player who has been on this lineup uh, for many years now, and he is not going to disappoint with this early hero dive, taking out a gigantic chunk of the bottom section of this base, even diving in quite deep with that Barbarian King to knock down the enemy Archer Queen, grabbing that CC pull as well. It's a Lava Hound coming out, and that is not going to slow the King down at all. Yeah, that's uh, Rock of Blues coming at the Queen right now. He had a couple of ground skillies that intercepted both his Royal Champion and his Queen. The Queen is still getting the job done, but those Rock of Blues surge now and taking out his Royal Champion, you know, leads up to that multi Inferno. But he did get the Rage Tower to trigger. So he may be able to still handle it. I am a little bit worried about that multi-inferno. It's in a very difficult position right now where the balloons, if they went after it, they would get melted. He almost sees that stone slam to drop out whatever's inside and have that deal with it. But at first, he needs to focus on the town hall because we've seen that the town hall can prove to be difficult. And he's got that multi-inferno next to it as well, dishing out additional damage. But he's across 50% there, so the Town Hall is activated on percentage, and he's got some blues moving, and he'll even rage them to make sure they secure the Town Hall takedown, Woody. And there it is, even with the Tornado Trap, able to lock in that second star. Good to claim there, but as you noted, that multi-target Inferno still standing on the back end could be a big problem for these balloons. He does still have one free spell left. Is he going to have the uh, cojones to be able to hold that thing until the very, mm. very end? I don't know. It looks like he's trying to hang on to it, but man, there's a lot of point defenses still left up in the center of the base that have been knocking down these balloons since uh, the very beginning. He's dragging this Lava Hound out to the very edge so that it doesn't distract the minions that are coming through. That might prove clutch here. He's still also holding on to two Headhunters and a Baby Dragon for a little bit more DPS that he can apply to this base. With 20 seconds left, it's coming down to the very end. I don't know if he's got enough in there for cleanup, why is he still holding the baby dragon? Get it in there! <laughs> I think he was trying to hold it to go after the multi inferno there. He is able to sneak in his last no, headhunter no, after no. the king went down. They get that storage out of the way, but he needs to get the percentage a little bit higher here. If he can reach oh, a 98%, man. we are exactly tied. And no! The one star <laughs> is overcome. Imperium Titans take a one building lead in this war. In the standings of this match, Eric. Absolutely, with a Queen Charge Hog Rider coming in. We know that Imperium Titan love their Hog Rider attacks here, and they're a master at this. But Hog Riders are always one of those risky strategies where they aren't able to push through the Town Hall quite as easy as a lot of the other attacks. So you got to be careful. We need to see, generally, the Queen or the Siege Machine go into the Town Hall. It looks like he stacks the Queen with his Flame Flinger and pushes her off to the left. And with the Queen controlling all these mortars in the area, two mortars taken out a commission there and just made so that this flame flicker can go in and get the scatter shot down. So he's looking pretty solid here. I like the amount of value they can get out of the scatter shot, but he definitely needs to get the queen to take the turn and go over and secure that town hall. It's going to be critically important here, Woody. Yeah, that Flame Flinger has endured nerf after nerf, and yet it is still preferred as one of the best siege weapons at top level play just because of that super long range. It's basically a fire and forget mechanism as long as there's no long range defenses uh, like mortars to be able to lock onto it. It is just going to go to town, taking out lots of that enemy base. It does take a long time to get the job done, though, so you really have to make sure that the second and third stages sometimes of your attacks are able to complement it well. I think uh, so far Kingsman's going to be very happy with this initial deploy, taking down air defenses and getting that queen quite deep into the base, even popping an invisibility spell on the enemy defenses there to make sure that she funnels to the correct position, ought to make it uh, all the way to that town hall and get that down for the first dark here. Let's see how he follows up, Eric. Oh, he missed that multi-inferno. He's going to go back for it with a couple of balloons, freezing it on top of that. Definitely wants that multi down, and he's investing into it. Throws a hog right over there as well, and he looks like he does get some troops delivered into it. And no, he does not get it down there. So the multi right. could potentially cause some problems for the queen, as he has rocket balloons coming out of his flame flinger. Not and again! And the bulk of his hogs coming in from the bottom. 
He dropped additional balloons, additional hog riders, trying to take down that multi inferno, which we have seen so often has been the last line of defense to prevent the three star and does not get it done. He's going to have to cross his fingers, hope and pray that the main attacking army has enough to clean up along the back edge of this base to get that 100%. Very difficult spot here for it. Imperium Titans, who just barely got that 1% lead off of the defense against Badzinger, but need to follow it up with a 3-star of their own if they want to secure the uh, the win. Yeah, that multi wrecked the healer. Some of them survived and gave a little bit of healing output to the other half of the attack here, but he definitely needed the Queen to survive there. If that multi went down, the Queen could have been able to reach all of the defenses, and she would have been able to walk out the backside of the base and meet the Royal Champion over there. The Royal Champion is going to be met with the roadblock of that Expo and the defensive oh. Grand Warden. That'll probably too, be too much for her. He's also running low on time. It doesn't look like this one is going to happen. He's got a little bit too much there, but yeah, if that Inferno went down, this would have been a triple, I'm convinced of it. So a very, very unfortunately, he went to backup plan, to backup plan. He reattempted it multiple times there to try to get that Inferno down, but it would have been better if the King of the Phoenix could have just taken it in the first place like he planned. It would have been crushed if he- Slugfest right now between Bad Zinger and Imperium Titans, trying to see which one of these two teams is gonna come out on top but the three stars have just not been forthcoming in the mid to late stage of this war now. Can BN follow up with yet another one of these Laloon strikes to try to get the job done? Massive earthquakes falling onto the center of this base and he's just gonna carve out a gigantic hole in the middle to try to get uh, this Laloon prepped. Even brought a golem for this at attack uh, to support that archer queen on the left side. Taking down that enemy air defense and scatter shot will be another big strike earlier on. But wow, he's wasting no time at all, is he, Eric? No, just pushing that golem in to tank for the queen. The queen gets cut off by the king as she turns north. That's going to force her into the base. The king is partially cut off on the top side, but he has a Tesla on there. And he may have to invest some balloons into that Tesla far to make sure the king takes a turn to the eagle artillery. That eagle artillery is going to be a very critical target. He invests the world champion into it. That will get the job done, and that should hopefully get the king to turn back. He does. He pops his ability, and at the same time, the log launcher is coming in to try to get that multi-inferno down. If he takes that multi, then he's in a very strong spot, and the CC troops come out, would finish the job there, while potentially getting the world champion down as well. But most importantly, he's able to break the ring of defenses, connect to the hole that was created by the lightning in the core of the base there, and, and he took out a lot of big targets on his Way through as well that was really a beautiful log launcher rolling through those walls and taking down the enemy multi inferno giving a nice path to the queen but she doesn't seem interested in taking it eric she goes along to the top side of the base instead and will fire away at that uh enemy royal champion not a bad target for bn to be able to claim here i'm sure that he can uh, salvage and figure out a way to use her on the top side of the base instead but he will need to apply a little bit more force with these balloons to make sure that that town hall goes down without too much difficulty double freezes out here and as soon as those loons get over atop he should pop that grand warden boom there it is eternal tome to keep those loons all the way protected from that gigantic giga poison they are not going to have anything to fear whatsoever as that timing was just ideal but oh no Tornado trap out the back, and there's going to be a multi-target Inferno firing away at him again. BM is going to drop another freeze to keep them safe. That is a massive pack of balloons parading over this base. Yeah, but they're not out of this yet here. They still have to go through the scatter shot, and being clumped up as you go to the scatter shot is going to work against him. He drops in the freeze. He throws in the remainder of his balloons to go try to pick up this air defense. Oh, and if on, he gets the, defense, the scatter shot down, he has a chance. He's got the warden still moving. Yes! He's cheered already. He thinks he has it, but he still needs the warden to go take out the last couple of defenses. The warden is not getting distracted off of his target there. Hey, oh, he got the storage. He has to turn onto this wizard tower, and with 30 seconds left, he's just coasting and i think he's got it in the bag there and that will put bad singer back in the lead lead re reclaimed a percentage and star advantage once again incredible hats off to that electro owl going home to roost the mvp of the cleanup along the top corner there zapping through multiple defenses that would have caused a lot of big problems for those balloons and minions but bad singer have done it like you said eric there grabbing yet another three star and star advantage navi holding on to that upper hand uh as we move back into the last round of attacks in our main war who is going to take it badzinger or imperium titans 
You're gonna need to put some pressure on here. Arium, definitely one of the strongest closer. Looking comfortable down there on his camera as well. But he's gonna go ahead and throw down a whole bunch of lightning to try to wipe out everything around the CC in the core of the base there. If he can now send his heroes in to connect to that, he's gonna have to launch a Lalo afterwards that is gonna have very, very little spell support. So we'll see what he goes after with the heroes here, but if he, he uses, I guess if he pushes the queen towards the town hall here, then he'd probably have to invest all of his remaining spells there to get her through to the town hall. So that could be a bit risky. I'm not sure exactly what the play is here, but he's going to put the world champion at the top of the base there. That'll support the king. And it looks like he's already trimming out defense up there with the baby dragon and trying to push her to the eagle artillery. She's going to end up pulling the CC over there, and that could be a little bit of a problem, but we'll see how he handles it. It's like the green over on the really need the three star from this strike now in order to give themselves any sort of hope to hold off against the bad singer defense later on this is going to be a big loss losing that archer queen over on the right side court before she can get much more damage done to that compartment with the town hall and arium's gonna be coming from the back side trying to slap through the whole entirety of this base moving all the way through. Good news though, he does trigger that tornado trap relatively early there, and we'll have to worry about that with these balloons. Battle Blimp is gonna be pathing directly toward the Town Hall as it always does, gets right over on top, and with the Eternal Tome, that is gonna be a safe delivery. Can we get the Town Hall down in time to keep these balloons safe though? That Giga Bomb is gonna be exploding with fury. Poison is out, and he's got to keep going, pushing all the way through. He looks comfortable here, Eric. Absolutely, just gotta power through the monolith. All of the splash damage on the base is gone, but the Town Hall Poison is wreaking havoc on some of the blues there. He's got the monolith under control there. He can throw something maybe into that wizard tower to distract it if he wants to, but I think he's got it under control. He's got a lot of time left to work with. The Warden is still dishing out his damage, and there's a nice clump of balloons there wrapping around the north side defenses, and he can push his way back over to this wizard tower. He's absolutely got it under control. On top of that, he's able to draw that Lava Hound completely out out of the way and make so it's not distracting his cleanup so he'll have to power through the king here with all of his cleanup but with another 36 seconds he's not going to have a problem doing that the warden balloons will quickly mow him down and that's what they needed guys they're down on stars going to this attack here but that's going to put a lot of pressure over to badzinger and badzinger is going to be back in a similar position to what they just were in the attacks before so i i think they need a high 90s attack here to be able to Holding on to the last attack now, trying to get either uh, a three star or at least that 94%. Absolutely. Diva is one of the highest hit rate players on his team. When he played through the qualifying stages, he he was the highest hit rate in the world, I believe. So definitely a strong anchor to push through here. But now we'll see if he can make it happen here with this flame flinger. He's got the queen charge going towards the town hall. He's got plenty of uh, spells that he's going to be using here for this queen, not involving any lightning like we saw in some of the previous attacks there, but we'll see if this queen can go in here and secure the town hall. The CC is on the far other side of the base, and you can see that model all the way up in here, but a lot of targets here to push in and take down, and a lot of high value targets with these multi-infernos for Lalo, and if he can clear out all the way into the monolith, then this queen is going to set up this Lalo perfectly here, Woody. He's also done some great work mine sweeping there with those coconut loons, floating those in to make sure that there's no sticking air mines to cause problems for those healers. As the Archer Queen is now taken down that bottom compartment, first star is claimed, and there is a great uh, start here for Dima. He's running uh, the clock now, though, and needs to get that second stage of the strike ready and prepped as the Flame Flinger, Archer Queen, and Barbarian King have done a three-pronged stab into this base and taken out a big chunk of it. I still see that air defense up on the bottom corner, though, and I definitely know he's going to want to take that down uh, before those balloons start floating overhead. Dima from Bad Singer with now less than half of the remaining time to get this three-star finished off, Eric. Okay, well, he's got the Roar Champion coming to the bottom of the base there, but the Queen did fall short. She did not take that monolith. I was 
Uh, pretty sure that she needed to go all the way in there because now he needs to fight the sweepers as he pushes his way through. He has the world champion ability, and her ability could hit the sweeper that's knocking his balloons back right now, but that doesn't save him later on. I'm a little bit worried here. Rage Tower goes off, but he's got the board ability to counter it. He's got red air bombs going off there as well, dropping in more balloons across the top of the base there. The world champion finally gets the hound pop so she can get back in commission, but the sweepers continue to knock him back here. He's got one more freeze. He's got the bulk of the big defenses down. Now the question is, Freeze the monolith or freeze the scattershot. He chooses to freeze the monolith. And that might push the world champion through. Where's the diggy? The diggy's gone. The diggy's gone. The, the scattershot stays standing. The monolith stays standing. He's not out of this yet, no. though. He still has the ward in here, Woody. He does. That's going to be a lot of big damage. He's holding on, though. He's feeling confident. Just needs to knock Percentage? that one down. That'll be 93% <laughs> and 94% for the win. Bad Singer wow. over and above! Arium's team has been knocked back! ET Exports has been demolished as Dima from Bad Singer doesn't quite get the three star here, but that is enough to move on with the win! Absolutely. That was wild. What a finish right there. I, I wasn't sure how he's going to push through those last couple of defenses there, but he does take him down. That last door there stays standing. That road champion coming in clutch there and sweeping out some of those sweepers and pushing through towards that monolith. I mean, it would have been overkill there if he had the diggy to get the stun, but obviously when the road champion stopped up in the hound, she's going to get stalled and let that diggy escape her. But yeah, that was a clutch, clutch play right there. Dima continues to perform at the highest level here, and he's going to lock in the win there for his team. And that, that's that's rough there for Imperium Titans, knowing that if they didn't end up with a one star, they would have been a star up on Badzinger. But, you know, they're not done yet because... We still have a lot of rounds left here. And if we uh, pull back up our Swiss stage bracket, we would see that we have every team that is going to be splitting into, they're going to be splitting into two separate brackets, either the 0 and 1 teams or the 1 and 0 teams. So a big win right there for Badzinger is going to set them up very, very nicely. And there we go. Our final scores are in a slight percentage advantage into Badzinger's favor. It looks like they won it by six buildings. Only six buildings separated these teams here. That's a pretty close war right there, Woody. Yeah, very, very close. And swinging back and forth as one stars have been overcome to nonetheless give that victory to Badzinger a very tight margin uh, a, a victory here. But that is going to be how the cookie crumbles uh, with Imperium Titans getting the chance to move on in the lower side of this Swiss stage. It's not going to be until a team is three losses uh, away before they will be eliminated. Badzinger playing very consistently, very strong out on top. Uh, both teams, however, with that 60% hit rate, bringing in three triples. Uh, it was just the deficit uh at, at, at that second hit from Almolin that left Imperium Titans behind now. So congrats to Badzinger on moving on up on the top side. They've overcome what might...